You're always stronger in the eccentrics than in the concentrics. Negatives, go for really heavy, slow eccentrics. That's where you get most gains, strength-wise and muscle-wise. Um, no. Hi guys, welcome to Bobbody. My name is Dieter and today I want to talk about slow eccentrics or negatives as people used to call them. Now if you go for really heavy slow eccentrics, that's where the magic happens. That's where you get most gains strength-wise and muscle-wise. Um, now, what is eccentric work and what is concentric work? Normally when you do an exercise you both do concentric and eccentric but with eccentric exercises you focus more on the eccentric part of the exercise. This is a concentric contraction when the muscle gets short under tension and when you're going down that's an eccentric contraction when you resist um, the lengthening of the muscle. That's basically it. Now when exactly does the magic happen? When you go for really heavy loads and you resist that eccentric part, you really hold tight while the muscle gets longer under tension. Preferably with a load that is heavier than your one rep max. That sounds like it's impossible, but therefore you have a lot of cheating systems. Um, before we go into some examples, I just want to tell you that later on we'll get back to the programming and where you program them in, because you shouldn't always do them. Um, also because they give a lot of doms, a lot of soreness the day after. For instance, when you have an athlete in the competition season, you don't want to program them in because they are going to be too sore the day after to play a good match. All right? Um, mostly you, do, you use them as a finisher, by the way, for the last exercise of your muscle group. Um, so, some examples. No, there's somebody that can't do a single pull-up. Yeah? They've done a nice study. Um, it's a big study within CrossFit by people that couldn't do a single pull-up and you have them doing banded pull-ups and they saw after a year of trying to get better with banded pull-ups that they didn't make a lot of progress then you had other people that couldn't do a single pull-up so they can get to this position yeah they have them standing on a box or they have them jumping up then holding this position and then slowly lowering down really focusing on controlling the lowering so not letting the muscle go but really resisting 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 while the muscle gets longer under tension and what do you know they got a lot more progress and almost everybody got their first pull-up within a couple of months or a year right more examples because there's tons of examples you take a weight that is heavy, heavier than your rep one repetition max of your strict press or your military press you push press it up and you go slowly 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 down now we have programmed those slow eccentrics wisely in our online training programs and we'll give you a couple of examples of it right now <laughs> So you just saw a couple of examples in the last clip of ways to beat the system and to work the eccentrics under, your, under a heavier load as when you would just do it with one arm or with one leg by adding resistance because you can pull more weight down with two hands and let go of one hand in the eccentric part. Now, there's a lot of more ways to do that. Uh, for instance, when you're doing bicep curls and you're completely worn out, you're completely depleted, you can still get some more reps out if you lift with the other hand and then you only work the eccentric part with one hand. You can even um, do some lateral raises with a little bit of body English up with a weight that you wouldn't be able to get up strictly but only if you can perfectly do it under perfect technique with a slow lowering part all right but there's a really nice way to get um, benefit and more gains out of the eccentrics with banded exercises and they are called cies concentric part isometric part and an eccentric part for instance in a normal tricep kickdown this would be the right resistance 
but to go up it would be too easy because it would be the same resistance as the concentric part. Now you can get a lot more gains out if you would do the concentric part at a distance where it's hard to get the hands down, then you hold isometrically, you step back, you create an overload, so this is too heavy of a resistance to get the band down, but you cheat it by stepping back and now you slowly go up in a slow eccentric under a bigger resistance than your concentric part. You step front again, forward again, then from there, right, right resistance for the concentric part, hold isometrically, step back, and this is then the right resistance to work your eccentrics in a heavy way. That's just one example of a CIE. You can do it with um, straight on push downs, exactly the same. Step back and then slowly let go. Or you can do it, for instance, with a single arm pack. Um, fly. Fly, yeah, thanks. Single arm pack fly where you bring the hand in, you step side, this is a harder one, and you slowly open up, go back for the concentric part, and then you alter the resistance for the eccentric part. If you play it a little bit smart, you can find alternatives for every exercise with this band. So, very important to know is that you're always stronger in the eccentrics than in the concentrics. Like, for instance, we do with the band at CIEs, concentrics, isometrics, eccentrics. Um, very important to program them in wisely, like we, for instance, do in our online programs. If you want to know more about our online programs, of course, you can hit the link below. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and hit the like button. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.